Um, you know, starting with the win over Louisville, uh, thought the student section was awesome. It was great having uh, such good energy. Um, I appreciate the fans that were there and supported us Saturday night. And I think the the noise played a part in, in uh, Louisville's first possession. You know, they got down to the one yard line, had a false start. Um, so it's a weapon, you know, and, and it's definitely an ally that we need to continue to, to embrace here and, and just keep bringing it. Obviously, we'll get two more opportunities uh, at home here in November. You know, as far as the game goes, I thought it was a really good response <clears throat> from our staff and from our players. It was uh, a lot of fun, you know, to be a part of a, uh, a game like that and, and a finish like that. You know, and to do it at home and, and have Halloween be a part of it. A bunch of great costumes and, uh, you know, it was pretty fun seeing some of the creativity and students and, and even some of the fans. I think Ted Lasso was definitely out there a couple different places. I was laughing as I turned around at one of the commercial breaks, but uh, it was a fun night. You know, I was really proud of, uh, of the faith of our team, the, the resiliency of our team, just um, – Throughout the game, you know, it's hung together, showed a lot of grit, and the defense had a, spe a special night, you know, um, playing, you know, without some of our key players, as you know, but just, man, getting it done, you know, and tackling really well in space. I think we've played really good complementary football defensively, just special teams, you know, with Trent Gill. But I thought Drake Thomas and Levi Jones were, were spectacular in that game. You know, Drake had um, 15 tackles, but he had three or four that were just one-on-one -on -one in space that were really, really nice plays. Uh, Levi did some really good things, not just at backer, but in pass rush. And uh, impressed with Malik Cunningham. I mean, man, is that guy a good football player and, and a tough guy to defend. And I think we did about all we could do. Um, to hem him up, you know, there, I thought our DBs other than one play, um, kept the ball in front of them, played the deep ball, uh, offensively, we struggled until the fourth quarter, you know, we, we finally got an explosive play there with Trent and I felt like that sparked us and then scored 21, um, points in the fourth. It was awesome to have that finish and that, that final drive, we get the ball with like nine minutes left in the game and, you know, eat up seven minutes on the clock and score a touchdown to make it a two possession game after they had kicked the field goal to make it a one point game. So that was good to see. But uh, Trent Penix, I felt like he sparked us. You know, it was great to see him kind of have a game like that. It's something we've been seeing uh, from a coaching staff standpoint and, and hoping for. And it was great to have that happen. So it's happy for him and for our team, you know, just from. Overall, I thought, you know, offensively, we positives. We didn't turn the ball over. Uh, taking care of the football is a huge deal. Thought we caught the ball well. You know, it was great to see DC uh, come back the way he did. Emeka had another good game. CJ Riley had a great catch in the red zone for a touchdown. Uh, Porter had a drop and then came back with a huge catch there. And that was the one that really sparked us. The next play was the touchdown uh, to Penix. Um, you know, Thayer continues to, to do what he does. And we protected well. We had one sack in the game. Uh, they brought a lot of different pressures. And obviously, Leary had four touchdowns, and uh, we were three for three with uh, red zone touchdowns and our three red zone drives. You know, negatives, we, we've got to get our run game back to where it was. And, you know, it's not all on players. It's not all on coaches. It's, it's everybody. There's different people in different plays. And, and sometimes we're running the ball into a poor, you know, an overloaded look, and that's on us as coaches to, to uh, help them. And some of that, we have RPOs built in where Devin just needs to make better decisions on when to throw it. But, uh, and there were some missed blocks, like you usually see in the run game when you don't do well. And then there was one um, play that Ricky, you know, bounced laterally and he had a good vertical lane if he would have stayed vertical. So there's a lot of things there and, and things that we can get better at, and that's the good part of it. But I thought, you know, Louisville did some good things. They were they're definitely pressuring us a lot in the run game, and, you know, you got to give them some credit on that as well. I thought uh, defensively, Shy Battle's interception was a great play. We really worked hard on deep balls. He thought Louisville 
you know, it was a vertical passing team off of their run game and, and uh, the onus was going to be on the corners at times to make plays and they did, you know, Aiden could have had two interceptions. It would have been great catches, but he, he got his hands on two deep balls. You know, defensively, they got in the red zone twice and, and we gave up zero touchdowns down there. They had a missed field goal and made field goal. You know, I thought the discipline in our pass rush lanes was um, really, really good. You know, Coach Wiles with the, the front, uh, Levi when he was in it as a linebacker, but the guys just did a nice job of keeping him uh, in the pocket or having a spy for him, you know, slanting one way or twisting another way and forcing him a certain direction and then tackling him. Uh, as I mentioned with Drake and Levi, you know, we had three fourth down stops and, and uh, probably one of the things that I'm most proud of, just the way the defensive kids reacted on boots and play actions off the run game. Those are plays that have hurt a lot of people and they didn't hurt us in that game. You know, negatives, we gave up an explosive pass for a touchdown, huge play, we can't give up. Um, we had two opportunities for interceptions that we dropped and, you know, in the run game, they had some yards on us where we lost our gaps up front a couple times and too many times. Uh, I thought our special teams were, were very strong. Again, Trent Gill uh, is punting the football. He's a weapon, 43 yards a punt, six times. Uh, his, all six of his punts were down inside the 20 to set up our defense. Uh, kickoff coverage we had a couple returns on us in this game where we had the tackle and wasn't just touchbacks. And both times we were able to get them down inside the 25. So that was good to see. Had good overlap, guys getting off of blocks. So now we get to play uh, another road game and, and uh, a Florida State team that had a lot of momentum, um, had won three straight games, just had a barn burner with Clemson. You know, it was a one possession game and they're really doing some good things. You know, uh, they're, they're much more physical. Uh, they've kind of settled in on who they are. You know, they're, they're a big, strong, physical defensive line. You know, that's the first thing you see. They got a defensive end, number 11, transferred in from Georgia that leads the conference in sacks and tackles for loss. A defensive tackle number zero, I think, is really impressive, disruptive player. Uh, they're not doing as much. You know, they're, they're simplified on defense and they're playing better, they're playing sound, playing hard. Uh, offensively, they're, they're committed to running the ball. They've rushed for 100 yard, or 200 yards in six of their eight games, and both of their tailbacks are, are really impressive. They're averaging over seven yards a carry. They're probably the best two running backs we've seen this season. And the quarterback, Henry's a, a good athlete. You know, he's not just a runner. He's throwing the ball better. They've got a multitude of guys they throw it to. There's six guys over 15 catches. The tight end leads them in receiving. But it's another opportunity to go play a, a huge game. You know, November is a, a very important month. It's the first time uh, in my time in the league that it's been wide open for who's going to represent each side of the division that they're in. So it's exciting, you know, right now in our conference to have, you know, several teams on both sides of their divisions, Coastal Atlantic, fighting to get to Charlotte. And each game's going to matter a lot. And so we're excited for our next opportunity. And you know, chance to go play a game, not at 7.30, thank you. Uh, awesome to, to be able to go play a game and, and not have to come home at four in the morning afterwards. So looking forward to that time slot. And uh, I know our players are thankful for that. It's been a lot, you know, to play eight games and have seven of the eight at 7.30. So we're looking forward to this four o'clock kick and look forward to playing a very talented team down in uh, Tallahassee. Questions? Jonas. Hey, Coach, you talked about uh, Drake in your opening statements. Um, can you just kind of talk about how it, it, it seems like you guys have lost linebackers and he's kind of picked up their, their abilities and, and gotten stronger as the season's going on. Can you yeah. talk about his abilities to take on more responsibility, but his production hasn't dropped off at all and how he's just been kind of rising his game the last few weeks? You know, Drake was a middle linebacker his whole life uh, until he got here. So, He's been playing Sam and been playing Will. Uh, so it's really natural for him. And probably because he knows what's happening on the outsides of him, it's pretty easy transition because he knows who's fitting where, you know, at the Sam and Will positions around him. Uh, from a leadership standpoint, he's ready for this. I mean, you know, he, he's been a guy that has uh, demonstrated leadership through example for a couple of years and 
this year he's just been different. You know, he's been very confident. I think he, um, he knows, you know, he's one of the best players on our football team. He knows that. And he's not um, a guy that's cocky about that. I think he's just a very confident player that brings it every day. And the guys respect him. And, and thankfully, he's using his voice now to express how that's supposed to look with his teammates. And, and they respond to it. Was, was Saturday his best game you've seen since he's been here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 15 tackles and then the open field tackles, the things that people don't see. I mean, he was just crushing offensive linemen in that game, too. Those guys were trying to climb up and he was knocking them over in the backfield and, you know, did some good things in coverage, had a really nice pass breakup. So, yeah, he played a really, really good football game. David. You know, you got a guy like Corey Durden who's, you know, go, going back to play you know, his alma mater. Um, is, is, can you lean on him a little bit even more with his experience with that team? And, and also, you know, how do you kind of rein in those emotions when you know he's going to want to have a, you know, a huge game against a, a former team? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know it'll be um, for Corey uh, emotional. I mean, he's got friends on that other sideline. So I know once the ball snapped, that's not going to matter to him. Um, but you just got to keep him focused on his job, you know, and I think those are discussions we'll have with him to not let the emotions of the game be what it's about. It's about executing and playing at a high level. I thought Corey really played his best fundamental game of the year against Louisville. Um, stayed in his gap, you know, played with his hands, pressured the quarterback. So we just got to keep him focused on what works for him. As far as talking to him about the other team, you know, not sure how much that helps. You know, it's they're a different team than they were last year. Uh, obviously, we are too. So, you know, if there's things that he thinks will help, we'll listen. But, you know, when you get out there to play, it's it's not going to matter. You know, the guys have to execute every snap, and they're going to play hard, and we're going to play hard. Aaron. Hey, Dave, you, you guys played the Clemson game, the Miami game, the Louisville game came down to the final minutes as well for you guys to close that one out. How much value is there with having these types of close games to test your team? Even when you know you've got a tough group coming in with veterans back, how much value is there in those close games? Yeah, I mean, there's a confidence. I think, you know, Clemson uh, was an overtime win. La Tech, we intercepted a pass to close it out. So, We've had a lot of one possession games here and you just got to make the play at the end, you know, to put it away. And we've been able to do that uh, on several occasions and not on some others. So they're good learning experiences. I think it builds confidence, you know, in the guys that if you just keep playing and believing and doing the things that you're supposed to do, you know, eventually you're going to break through uh, in a game. And when you have a quarterback playing like we do the way he is, it's just a matter of time, you know, before he does something that helps us offensively because he's just doing a really good job managing uh, the game and doesn't matter how many seconds are on the clock. I mean, the guy's really good in two minute drill too. So I think our team's very confident in that. Corey. Dave, at this point in the season, Devin Leary is thrown for 21 touchdowns, two interceptions. Obviously, the, the first two games, he had one interception. He hasn't thrown one since. Uh, you know, wanted to get your thoughts on, on his play this season and how big he's been for this team, especially, uh, you know, in terms of passing the ball. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> protecting the football uh, is the best way to win, period. All the other stats that are out there, that is the one that gives you the best opportunity to win games. And when your quarterback is doing what ours is from that standpoint, he's, he's uh, giving us the best chance to win, not just because of his arm or his accuracy, because he doesn't help the other team, you know. And I think at the end of the day, a lot more games are lost than they are won. And Devin does a nice job of not – putting that out there and giving them a chance to play on a short field and hurting our defense. He understands that every play doesn't have to be a great play. If he gets to the next one, that might be the one where we have a guy wide open, you know? So he's learned a lot in his time here. Uh, he's grown up a lot and he's done a, a really fantastic job with coach Beck and coach Proctor of just learning the game plan and being patient and taking what's there. 
I was also going to say, it really seems like he's most comfortable in that fourth quarter, regardless of, of the circumstances leading up to the game. You know, that second and third quarter didn't go as well as you guys had probably planned against Louisville, but he played really well in the fourth quarter. He's done that against teams like Clemson in the past and, and several times this year. Uh, you know, I mean, what, what have you seen from him that uh, gives you confidence in him every single time when you're late in games? Well, you know, since the pit game, you know, I think that's the first time I've seen how clutch he is. He's just, he doesn't get rattled. The moments aren't too big for him. Um, I think there's some people out there that get up tight and he's not one of them. And, and that makes him look really good because there's people around him that are flinching and pressing or trying to do someone else's job. And Devin's doing the same thing he was doing previous quarter and the previous quarter before that. You know, I think a lot of times people think that guys all of a sudden become superhuman uh, in these clinch situations and they really don't. They, they just execute and sometimes other guys don't, you know, and I think Tom Brady's a great example too, you know, I mean, he does all these things in clutch situations. Peyton Manning did all those things in clutch situations and you hear him talk about that kind of um, demeanor that they don't change who they are like they're the same guy they're just that guy the whole game and other people aren't and Devin's really calm you know he's very poised he doesn't get rattled and so those moments for him um, are really good moments and uh, that gives us a chance you know in these one possession games to be elite James yeah David felt like uh, the red zone was one of the ways you guys won this game against Louisville and you've been good in that area offensively and defensively this year. What are some of the traits you see or you need to be good defensively, specifically in the red zone? It was an area that uh, we, we work a lot in the, in the red zone, first of all. It's, it's an area of emphasis here. So I think there needs to be a comfort zone that your players have down there. Like they know your game plan. They understand it. I think a lot of times as coaches, you spend so much time in the regular part of the field and then you get down there and there's a lot of things that can change down there. Um, your coverage packages when you get inside the 10 are different on defense because uh, the windows are different. And so we spend a lot of time down there. The kids understand what we do, the whys behind it. And so because of that, they can play fast and execute and do the things necessary. Um, and that was our best game in the red zone. We were 100% on both sides of the ball at reaching our goals and I agree with you. You know, I think that's definitely one of the reasons we won that football game. And and just to follow up, I wanted to ask you about Jordan Travis. Obviously, he's considered a dual threat quarterback as well. Does it help playing Louisville before them or the game? Are there are they similar schematically? Uh, he's definitely a great athlete. You know, I think he does some things on his own. Um, you know, when they drop back and throw, where he can extend plays, and and he's got that extra gear. He can really run, you know, uh, his speed is, is very similar um, to Malik Cunningham's speed. I think Malik's more of a slasher too, you know, I mean, he's, Malik's really different the way he changes direction and not to say that Henry doesn't change direction well. I just think Malik is, he's a little different that way. Um, but you have to be ready for this guy as a runner. It probably does help that we just spent the last week working on QB run game as well. Um, the designed runs uh, aren't, aren't always the same. You know, we'll have to work on what their run blocking schemes are going to be and fit them up and make sure we have enough people there and be super disciplined in our pass rush lanes again uh, and in coverage because when guys scramble, obviously you can give up some big plays on scramble drill. So our rules on defense have to be really sound that way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Todd Gibson. Yeah, Dave, sometimes when one side of the ball is struggling and the other side is playing well, there, there, there can be some friction. I, I didn't see that on, on Saturday night. And if that's so, what does that say about your team? It, it seems to be a tight group. Yeah, I, I think they believe in each other. And, and the complimentary aspect of what we preach uh, carries over there. And I think, you know, the defense knew that they needed to help the offense. Uh, and the offense knew they needed to help the defense. You could hear it in the locker room. That's what the guys were talking about. Hey, the defense is playing great. We got to get out there and help them. Like the kids knew they were excited to get the adjustments that we were going to make. And then just took us a little bit longer than we wanted to, to execute them. But uh, that's football, man. I mean, there's some games and 
obviously in the Miami game, we didn't hold them enough and, and we needed the offense to score more points. And there's games where you're just going to have to outscore them. There's games when you got to hold them down score wise. And, and there's games where your special teams have to be able to score. So we are playing good complimentary football and that's, that's really good. I mean, that's something that we needed to be able to do to have a chance. Um, just wasn't what people expected, I'm sure, with us having four guys down. Um, probably expected us to have to score a lot more to win. So I was proud of us for finding a way to win, you know. David. Quick two-part question. Um, <clears throat> one, did you dress up for Halloween? And two, if you could dress up as any other college football coach, who would you dress up as? Yeah, I did not dress up for Halloween. Unfortunately, uh, we had Halloween Sunday here uh, getting ready for the next game and, uh, you know, had a night game Saturday night. So didn't get much time to enjoy it. Was here late last night. Um, we did have um, some trick or treat here with the kids of the coaches and players and things like that going on. Um, if I could dress up as any other college coach was the question. Um, hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to pass on that question. Okay, fair enough. Jonas. Um, I'm laughing at that. That's how I almost forgot my question. Coach, you said uh, you talked about the running game in your opening statements. And over the last few weeks, you talked about how teams are defending you guys, putting eight in the box, uh, trying to stop the run. Now that Devin is showing that he, he can beat teams in the passing games, do you anticipate seeing teams uh, kind of back out now and, and trying to stop the run and maybe that'll open up things for, for, for Bam and Ricky a little bit more? You know, it's going to be interesting to see, Jonas. I think that's a, a good question. Um, I think you have to defensively in college football pick your poison at times, you know. I do, and we have to do the same thing here. And our offense needs to be able to play the math game. You know, if they're going to put guys in there, we got to be able to throw the ball, and, and we've been able to throw the ball to win. So, you know, you guys know me. You know, I'd love to be more balanced offensively than we are right now, but at the same time, I'd rather win games. And, and if they're going to make us throw to win, that's what we're going to do, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, there's – you know, there's a bravado <clears throat> about being able to run the football better than we are, and it's not blame on anyone. I mean, we all as a program have to be better in that area. It starts, you know, with me and then the offensive staff and then the players and it's something we take pride in, but take more pride in winning, you know. So if they're going to load it up, then we're going to throw it out there. I don't see any other hands raised. Does anybody else have any questions for Coach Doran? Did you really look at the crowd and, and, and single it out? Somebody dressed as Ted Lasso? That's pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I turned around to get a drink of water, and there's this guy has like huge mustache, Ted Lasso thing on. Uh, just made me laugh. You know, we get a lot of three and a half minute breaks. So, you know, and then you kind of catch something out of the corner of your eye that makes you look at it. It's like, wow, that's a pretty good costume right there, you know? But, uh, yeah, it was fun. I mean, it was great having a Halloween home game like that. It was a lot of fun. So, Coach, I, I know you didn't want to answer the college football question, but do you have maybe like a, a favorite Halloween costume that you've worn in, in the past? This is clearly a story you're writing. It's, uh, it's really not. I'm just, I'm just interested. <laughs> I'm just interested. You know, not really, man. Not, not that I can – not, not a really. big Halloween I mean, guy. You know, I mean, just the last however many years Halloween I've been coaching and, you know, lucky to even get a chance to do trick or treat with my kids, you know, when we had them when they're littler. So now maybe when I'm retired and things like that, I'll dress up like you or somebody, you know, and be a reporter, go around and annoy people. And <laughs> that sounds true. That sounds terrifying. 